Hi, it's Alex. Today I'm wearing one of my favorite shirts, a SEPTA shirt. I'm a huge fan of an advocate for public transportation, for reference. But today I want to talk about something else. I want to talk about the idea of negating an idea. So if you have some idea and then you have a line of reasoning, does that line of reasoning disprove the original idea, or is it not really sufficient to disprove it? This is something that comes up in a lot of different contexts. It comes up in arguments or discussions with other people. It comes up when you're reading someone's argument when it's written out and you're trying to determine if it's valid or not. But most importantly for me, it comes up when I'm reasoning through thoughts in my own head. Now, when I'm trying to sort out my own thoughts, I don't necessarily just do it by sitting. I like to write in a journal, actually this journal here. I know it looks rather girly, but I like that. So anyway, I write down my thoughts in this journal, and I look at the line of reasoning, like how one thought goes into the next and into the next, and I try to see if there are problems in my thinking, like if I'm making an irrational leap from one step to the next. And what I want to focus on is the idea of negating a previous idea. So one, one way that this has come up for me a lot is that in the past I had a kind of negative self-image, especially about my own physical attractiveness. And I used to have thoughts like, oh, I'm really unattractive, no girl would ever find me attractive. I would think things like that. And I would often think up examples of girls who were attracted to me or who had been attracted to me in the past, and then, in my head, I would find ways to make those not count. So I would say, well, there's this one person who is attracted to me, but that doesn't count because I didn't find her attractive. Now, if you were paying attention, I said originally that I was thinking, no girl finds me attractive. But I came up with an example that really proved that false. And the fact that I wasn't attracted back to the other person doesn't really disprove it. It just sort of weakens the statement. It makes me narrow the scope of it. So if I were really being truthful, I would adjust my thinking to say, well, no girl that I feel attracted to is also attracted to me. But then I would think up another example, and I'd be like, well, there's this one person who I was really attracted to, and she was attracted to me too, but it didn't work out for other reasons. And then I would reason like, oh, well, this it doesn't count because it didn't work out. And again, it's flawed reasoning. Like, if I really wanted to adjust my original statement to make it truthful, I would just arrive at, well, no girl who I'm attracted to and is also attracted to me has ever worked out with me in a long-term relationship. And that's sort of a silly statement because basically that just says, well, I'm single at the moment. There's not really much more information in that. But if I'm thinking, I'm single at the moment, it's not really a big deal. It's, it's not going to make me feel as bad about myself as if I'm thinking, I'm really unattractive and no girl is ever going to be attracted to me. Something like more drastic like that. So, I hope that you've picked up this pattern that's going on here, which is that you have this original idea and then there's a statement that negates it, and or it looks like it negates it. And it's really important to ask yourself the question, does this new information actually disprove or negate the original statement? So I use this a lot when I'm sorting out thoughts in my journal. I also use it when I'm reasoning things through in discussions with other people, because I see both myself and other people using this error of thinking. People will say something and then someone will say, well, but have you considered this thing? And sometimes what they say will actually be true but it won't contradict the original thing. But the way they word it makes it sound like it contradicts the other thing. And if you're not really paying attention, you can get the impression that the original thing that was said was untrue because the person preceded it with this like, but, and this sort of negative tone of voice and so on, maybe like an argumentative tone. So it's really important when you see a statement being sort of contrasted like that, that you ask yourself the question, does this new perspective disprove the original idea, or is it just another perspective that's also true and sort of coexists with the other one? I think that's a really important thing to be aware of. And again, I find writing it down sometimes is important 
for sorting it out. I don't always have the capacity to sort these things out in the middle of a discussion. Sometimes it takes time and reflection and even writing. So I hope that you've gained some insight out of this, and I hope that you will be able to catch this error if you make it in your own thoughts, but also if other people around you make it in writing and speech, and I hope that you will use it to come to a more truthful understanding of the world and yourself and life, and so on. Thank you.